What's going on guys? Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here and today I am bringing you an Edison format uh, deck profile and this deck profile is going to be on Gladiator Beasts. So if you are unfamiliar with Edison format, it's essentially a retro format similar to GOAT format that is based essentially around early 2010. I think it's like March to April of 2010. Uh, all based around what was shown in Jump Edison, and it's one of my favorite retro formats, so every now and then I like to upload some content on it. And I really wanted to do a Gladiator Beast deck profile because this deck just like has so much nostalgia for me. Previously, I uploaded like a Frog Monarch deck profile, which is like my favorite deck of probably all time, at least for old era Yu-Gi-Oh! Gladiator Beasts are like a special deck to me because they hold so much nostalgia for a large part of the old player base because they really were like king of the mountain for such a long time. It was like gladiator beasts were always the locals dominators. At the beginning of every format, people would switch back to glads for like several years. It just dominated for such a long time, even had success during teledad format, which was dominated by almost nothing but dad decks, some light sworn. But glads were able to hold their own for such a long time. And there's just such nostalgia in the sense that they really changed how the game was played as far as, you know, battle phase being such a huge part and the tag mechanic was, you know, brand new. And people developed like entire new play styles around this deck, which was very different from every other deck at its time. And honestly, for the good portion of the future too. It was just such a prevalent meta warping deck and one of my favorite uh, as far as nostalgia is concerned for sure. And I just think this deck is awesome because Heraklinos 100% is one of my favorite uh, old time cards, just absolutely fantastic card. And of course we're going to profile him in this deck profile. Before we get into it, Discord link down below if you wanna check that out along with all of our other social media links. And if you do like the Edison format content, be sure to like and subscribe. It's not something I do all the time, but it is something I like to do every now and then. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into this Gladiator Beast deck profile. Alright, before hopping into the Gladiator Beast count, I want to see down below in the comments if you were playing during Gladiator Beast format. Now, of course, that spans a couple of formats, but I guess specifically from 2008 to about 2010, uh, if you were playing back then in a competitive format, I want to know down below and sort of what your experience with Gladiator Beast was back then because looking at it from like a retrospect sort of standpoint, it's very fun looking at the deck now compared to back then because our, our thought process was so different. But yeah, leave down in the comments below uh, if you were here during that time. And without further ado, let's get into the Gladiator Beast count. We have the one Bestiari. Of course, it is at one during this format, so we can only play one of him. Uh, and he is sort of the main fuel to go into Geysaris. Following him up, we have the two Laquari. Now, Laquari was always sort of the main Gladiator Beast in the sense that it was 1800 being the strongest base statted uh, Glad, which means if you needed to run something over, Laquari was sort of, you know, the most serviceable monster being 1800. And of course, his effect boosting him to 2100 means he is usually just like the strongest normal summon on the field. Of course, you know, to be 21, he has to be special summon, but... Yeah, he usually presented, you know, field dominance, and that mattered a lot in the mirror match, especially. But, uh, like, decks like Little City as well are in Edison, and, you know, 1900 B-Sticks in general with, like, Fire Dog. Being 21 is huge, and it really helps you just set up board dominance so you can probably tag again on the next turn. Uh, next up is to a quest. Uh, so a quest in sort of, like... Darius, I think depending on which build of Gladiator Beast you're going for, you run two of one of them, either a quest or Darius. Uh, I'm doing a quest because my build isn't the uh, Prisma Test Tiger build, which I'll sort of explain how that version worked as well, but this is more of a Heraclino centered list, so I feel like Darius at two is a lot better, uh, or I feel like a quest at two is a lot better than Darius at two because it allows you to recycle your War Chariots even more, so those are some Gladiator Beasts there. Then we have the one Mermillo. Uh, you have to play at least one of this. He is sort of just for, you know, the spot removal you need and a bunch of different matchups. If, if your opponent establishes, like, a huge monster, Mamillo is sort of your main out to it. Uh, so you have to play one of him. Uh, one Red Tiari. Uh, Retari Rack! Uh, yeah, that, that was definitely, you know, 99.9% .9 of you aren't going to get that reference. Shout out to JT the Underdog, my favorite YouTuber of all time. Uh, if you know who JT the Underdog is, you know, shout out to you because... He, he, it's been a while since he uploaded, but yeah, he, he always shouted Retari Wreck every time he played Retari in a deck profile, so Retari is just like one of your best ways to deal with Graveyard Reliant decks like Vayu Turbo, Light Sworn, so uh, all the one of Gladiator Beasts are usually some niche situations that they'll come up, but you know, you do have an entire toolbox being your deck, so you might as well have them. 
One Darius, it's really good for making geyser plays out of your graveyard if Bestie happens to be there. Uh, of course, in the Prisma Test Tiger build, I'd probably play two of this, but in this list, one is fine. Uh, and then one Hop. Hop was something I didn't want to play originally because he can be not that great of a card, but there are some times, especially after testing this deck for a while, where your opponent just has a Cyber Dragon just whooping your butt. So sometimes you need Hop to just be either 21 or 24 defense. He has some matchups where he's particularly good, uh, and especially game one where they don't know what you're playing, this guy's amazing, but there's a lot of times where you side him out just because he can be very underwhelming as a Gladiator Beast, but he comes up, and I think it's worth running one. I am considering Sam Knight in the list, and I don't know if I'd take Hop out for Sam Knight, but there's been a couple times where Sam Knight could come up. I'm not on Rescue Cat either, so that's if you're on the Rescue Cat version of Glads, because there's just so many versions of Gladiator Beast, you would be playing Sam Knight, but we are not. Uh, and then we have this package, which is the one Secutor, and of course the three Test Tiger. Uh, of course, Test Tiger isn't really like a package card. Like you're going to be playing Test Tiger uh, in a lot of versions of Gladiator Beast, but I, there is a version of Glads that doesn't play Test Tiger at all, which is the one I originally was running. You just play it more of a stun style, just cycling through your Gladiator Beasts and keeping, you know, your field control and just tagging out every turn with like good trap cards, so you don't draw. Test Tiger, which by himself does nothing, and you never draw the brick that is Secutor. But if you want to turbo out Heraklinos, which is definitely what I want to be doing in this list, you sort of have to play the three Test Tiger and the Secutor. And Test Tiger, of course, is an amazing card in Gladiator Beast in general. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just have to play this if you want to turbo out Herc, which is, again, what this list is trying to accomplish, because I feel like your win percentage, once Herc hits the board set up, is just astronomical. It's very hard to lose with Heraklinos on the field, so the three Test Tiger and the one Secutor. Uh, three Proving Ground, which is essentially just more copies of your other Glads. This essentially means you're running, like, four besties if you need to search them, or you're running, like, a lot of Laquaries if you need to beat over something. Uh, it's just more copies of your Glad Beasts, but of course, it, this card is subject to Thunder King, so that is something you gotta watch out for, but, you know, with one Bestie, I think Proving Ground is really good. Then we play a suite of Battle Spells, which is gonna be the three Book of Moon and the three Enemy Controller. So not every list had to max out on these cards. Some list opted for things like uh, Shrink, which I don't choose to do because I am running Secutor, and Secutor with Shrink is just not very good. So I'd rather play the Book of Moons and the Econs and max them out because opening any one of these with like Glad plus Test Tiger is just instant Secutor. Um, so that's just very, very powerful. And of course, Econ and Book really help your Gladiator Beast win the battle phase so that you can proc their effects and get your advantage and get rolling into your Glads. Um, but yeah, like, again, there was a version I had with only three book, but the more I playtest this deck, the more I wanted three econ. And of course, these are also just very versatile, like, interruption cards. Uh, book of Moon being able to, like, book your opponent's stuff to stop their plays is really good. Also protect your bestiary or your laquari from, like, bottomless trap hole or anything like that. They're, they're, they're flexible, and, you know, econ can steal your opponent's monsters, which if you steal tuners, you go, like, synchro plays. Uh, you steal big monsters and attack for game, so they're flexible cards, but most of the time you're just trying to win battle phase with your gladiator beasts. For some back row hate, we are on the one MST as it is limited to one. The one cold wave, just the most busted card ever, and the one heavy storm. Cold wave in this deck is probably like one of the dirtiest decks to have cold wave in. Um, because your game plan a lot of the time is Geyserus. Now this list again isn't Prisma Test Tiger, which would turbo out Geyserus just like every single turn and play like an elemental hero package. So Cold Wave isn't as good in this list as it is in that one. But if you can activate Cold Wave and make Geyserus, you are so far ahead in the game. You probably just automatically win. It is so, so good. Um, so yeah, of course we get to play the nice band Cold Wave in Edison format. And that's it for spells. On to Trap, sort of, you know, the mainstay of Gladiator Beast, sort of post-2009. Uh, three, War Chariot. So this card is, like, one of the first of its kind in the game. There weren't many counter traps that actually negated monster effects back then. There was, like, Divine Wrath. Uh, so War Chariot was just such a huge card. If you can establish War Chariot and Heraklinos, you oftentimes just win the game outright. Uh, it's so, so broken. Uh, and being able to be recycled through a quest makes this card very powerful. Of course, it does require you to see a Gladiator Beast monster to be good. Uh, but just seeing one can sometimes help you win the game. It really helps deal with, like, Raikou and Caius, which are just huge in Edison format. So, yeah, we do like having the three chariots. So we are able to stop monster effects and, of course, protect our Heraklinos from pesky, pesky cards. Two, Wabaku. This is, like, 
one of the only decks in all of Yu-Gi-Oh's history that played this card competitively that wasn't like an alternate win condition. It's just really nice when your opponent thinks they win battle phase and you can Wabaku and then tag out with a Gladiator Beast. Uh, it really helps you establish more board presence and really good when people think they have the out to Heraklinos, like they just special summon Judgment Dragon and then they enter battle phase, attack Heraklinos and you Wabaku and you just win that trade out right. Um, so yeah, Wabaku is just of course a mainstay in a lot of Gladiator Beast lists. Two, Trap Stun. I really like this card a lot because same reason for Cold Wave. Essentially, it really helps Geyserus resolve in a manner that just nets you a billion card advantage and probably just win the game again outright. Uh, however, I've been like thinking about seven tools in the place of Trap Stun. I think both have merit. Uh, it's not always like optimal to like Trap Stun before you make your plays or, you know, it's not something you always do anyways, especially in the more uh, beginning stages of the game where you're just trying to roll into your actual plays. You won't really like Trap Stun uh, before you make your plays because you want to like, you know, hit a bottomless or a deep prison because those cards can stop you really early on. But there's just some times where in like those really simple game states where I'm not making Geyserus, I'm just swinging with a Glad and trying to tag out, where seven tools can negate counter traps, which I think is really good, while Trap Stun cannot. So I've been considering seven tools in the slot, but I think Trap Stun is just overall more powerful, and that's why we are on two of them in this list. On to some generic, just like good protection all around, just like good stuff traps. We have the two bottomless trap hole. This is just really nice versus, uh, you know, a myriad of different things. Uh, we have the Mirror Force. The two dimension prison, dimensional prison, I should say. Uh, I'm not playing Torrential in this list, so we don't really have like the, the staple suite of Mirror Force Torrential. We just have some battle stoppers. I don't really like Torrential too much in the main deck in Gladiator Beast because you are sort of like a field presence deck where uh, it can just be really hard to use sometimes. And that's why I try to like shy away from it, especially in the main deck. But these cards are just really, really powerful. Again, if you can set up Herc with War Chariot, battle protection becomes much more important because their only outs become like special 3k beat stick and try to ram. So two Starlight Road. So this card is very good for uh, several reasons. We run a lot of back row. Uh, but also, Gladiator Beasts are a deck that once you're rolling, you want to like get additional Gladiator Beasts on the field so you can like tag out with multiple Glads a turn and just get multiple effects a turn. And if, essentially, your snowball it just goes way too far and you're just going to win the game out of sheer pressure. Uh, this leaves you really open to like Torrential, Mirror Force, um, and like any other board wipes on field if you tend to go for this more aggressive route once you're already like winning. And Starlight Road is really good at countering those. Of course, this also helps with really annoying matchups like Black Wings because they have Kalut and Icarus attack. They can be an annoying matchup. And I guess in the same respect, Trap Stun is also a card for Black Wings as well. Um, but yeah, Starlight Road in the mirror match against Light Sworn, against um, Absolute Zero sometimes. This card just has so many matchups in Edison format where I think it's really good. Black Rose Dragon. Uh, so we are on two because we are on a more control heavy strategy. And if your opponent tries to board wipe Heraklinos with something and you can Starlight Road it, it's just almost guaranteed game. And then lastly, we have the one Solemn. Uh, you know, this card is staple, but I really like it in this deck because you can set it before you make your Geyserus play and then almost ensure your Geyserus play goes through. So that's really important. All right, that is it for the main deck. And now I'm going to go into the extra deck. I don't have the side deck built in Paper Yu-Gi-Oh! So I will upload an image on the screen right now, which is essentially the side deck I'm using. Uh, if you have any questions on it, you can leave a comment down below. Uh, I think it's like pretty standard for what glads were doing there's a couple of spicy cards like jowls of dark demise which could essentially be like a jujitsu master if you want something less funny but jowls in the gladiator beast mirror match is a really low-key tech that almost no one knows about like unless you were playing during that format where it's still really underrated as a tech card uh it's just so funny in the mirror match but yeah, besides that, I think it's a pretty standard side deck and some things you can change with it. But yeah, going on into the extra deck, uh, we have the two Heraklinos. So this guy is, you know, essentially we've been talking about him all deck profile. He's the version of Gladiator Beast I wanted to play because I have so much nostalgia with this card. Like this card has been a beast ever since he came out. Of course, he hasn't seen meta play since around 2011, essentially. Uh, he pops up every now and then back then, maybe upwards till 2012. Uh, but yeah, like, he's so amazing. Like, I'm gonna have some games uploaded with Gladiator Beast in the near future. Just some dueling book games that were, like, really good Edison format games. And you'll see the power of Herc. Like, when this card hits the board, the game state just changes immediately. It's no longer, like, a back and forth. It is your opponent just scurrying for any out in their deck to this card. And it's, it's so, like, 
it's the original protect the castle it feels like he's so ridiculous uh, and of course i want to play this version because i picked up two ulti heraclinos and i think this card is absolutely gorgeous um you will never make three like maybe once in a thousand games you'll make the third but your opponent would have to be playing like absolute garbage <laughs> i don't know like their deck would have to be you know a 60 card pile deck made by like a seven year old or something like along those lines so yeah that's essentially how you're only ever making three hair clean so you only need two uh but yeah he is the all-star of this deck for sure it's known like geysers is known to be the main play but there's so many different versions of glads and i wanted to highlight the heraclinos version because it is my favorite i love making this card it just feels so powerful uh yeah so two heraclinos next we have three absolute zero because this is a little city deck profile no this is geyserus so i'm gonna upload some geyseruses onto the screen now uh they're just not in the mail and i didn't want to postpone this deck profile like too long it's not like you know a lot of people were looking forward to me making a gladiator beat beast deck profile or anything uh, but yeah, I wanted to do the deck profile and I wasn't, I was tired of waiting on just the Geyserus to come in. So yeah, three Geyserus, it's your main play, it blows up two, it's been one of the strongest power plays in Glad since it came out, so yeah, three Geyserus. One Chimera tech for the Cyber Dragon and the side deck, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then we are running two Stardust Dragon for the Starlight Rose, and we're running two because we have two Starlight Rose, so we have the room in the extra deck, we might as well play the second one. Uh, and then because we're running enemy controller, I have just like some synchros that could come up. You almost never go into anything but your fusions and stardust. So these are just here to fill up the extra deck. And because we are technically running enemy controller, so we have a Brio, uh, we have the Goyo Guardian, we have the Thought Ruler. These aren't even in like level order as most extra decks are organized because they really are just thrown together. An Armor Master in case we steal a Gale. Uh, and then we have a Black Rose and a Colossal Fighter. So again, these are just random synchros. You can throw almost anything in here uh, for your liking in Edison format. Things that come up for you, maybe at your Edison locals, if your locals plays Edison. But uh, yeah, so that is going to do it for the deck profile. Again, we're, we're essentially playing Herc Turbo Glads. And it's one of just my favorite decks of the past because it really was a monumental change in Yu-Gi-Oh! At least in my eyes, especially playing back then. It felt like we were on just like a lot of good stuff decks up until this point with some like archetypes in general. But once Glads came out, I felt like the whole scape of how Yu-Gi-Oh was being played changed dramatically. And I don't know, I, I give a lot to this deck for my upbringing in the game. So this is a deck I really enjoyed and wanted to play and I like Heraclinos. So yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the deck profile. If you did, leave a like, subscribe for future Edison content. Again, I don't do it super often, but... I do like to highlight the format every now and then, especially when I'm building a deck that I really enjoy in the format. So yeah, this has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Bye, YouTube.